All right, uh, morning guys. Uh, we're Team Innosis. Uh, my name is Dinot Mahabir. This is Julia Simon and Sonny Kutupali. And before we actually get into our presentation, we want to paint a bit of context for the judges and for the audience. It's important to note that all of us are developers in this room. Well, most of you guys are developers, right? And we like to, as developers, we like to sometimes put our thought process first when developing software. We like to say we know how this works, and that's it. We develop software, we push it to the market, and it fails, right? And that's really true. So we took a step back in mm -hmm. all this. We said, well, let's not do that. Let's try to understand the current market. Let's try to understand our users, all right? And that's the general methodology, well, yeah, methodology in the designing of the software for us. Uh, by chance, anyone can guess what that figure means? No? You don't know? Sorry? I wish. I wish with my bank statements. Actually, this is the amount of money the Caribbean regions imports in agriculture products. Pure agriculture. That's 3.1 billion. Right? This is excluding Guyana um, in terms of being an importer. What we found is that uh, it's very hard to con conceptualize this figure. We don't know what's 3.1 billion. At least I don't think anyone here ever touched 3.1 billion dollars. Right? Uh, talk to me if you did after. We, took a, we did a bit of um, graphing here. You see, this, the orange part, is that 3.1 billion. And that 10% is, is Ghana's GDP, the remainder. The region is importing 90% of our GDP in just agriculture products. That's in the entire value of Guyana. So what does that tell you? Well, not you guys, but what does that tell us and what do we tell the farmers when we get this type of information, right? This, you can look at it as a, something bad or you can look at it as an opportunity for farmers to capitalize on $3.1 billion of food products. So that's a global view, you know, but really that's not, not talking about Guyana specifically. I want to talk about a story that was published two days ago in the Guyana Chronicle. I don't know if anyone of you saw it, right? But it's about 57-year-old uh, Donald Ganga Rampersad. I don't know if anyone saw it. He is a farmer, a banana farmer, in Wakenham. And he is best known as the man who has to provide 51 meals a day for his family. He has 15 kids in Wakenham. He needs to feed them every single day, three times a day. People like Ganga has the same problem as so many farmers in Guyana. They're not getting people to buy their produce because they look down on those. You know, he doesn't have nice, he doesn't dress properly when he goes to the market, he doesn't, he doesn't know how to market, he just goes and tries to make a living. People don't, people know, he actually said it himself. He said that small farmers are the mercy of buyers. We want to eliminate this, not just for Ganga, but for medium and large scale farmers as well. So we were like, okay, Let's try to understand it from a user's perspective. That's all that matters here. It doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what anybody in this room thinks. It matters what they think and what they need. So we sort of step back, like I mentioned. I mean, we did our entire thinking process on this. And this is the three steps that we did. We tried to understand our users through Ganga's story, through the region's data, data stats. Um, that's the first step in us building our application. It doesn't matter with anything else. We want to understand what our users can, what the users want, the issues the users have, and how we can fix that. And exactly those are the three process. We understand the users. We will build an application that the users will love. And then at the end of the day, it's the users that is going to be happy. And that's what matters. I'm really too concerned who's happy in this room. So with that, that bit of context, I'd like to introduce to you Enosis owns farmers market.gy. Yes. Yes, we'd like to introduce you to farmersmarket.gy. 
So this is the platform that we built to satisfy the needs of not just the persons who are looking to buy agricultural products, but the persons who produce them. So the application that we have built is, of course, a responsive application. So it will work on any device that you may have, whether it's a desktop, tablet, mobile, it doesn't matter. Um, as part of building this platform, we built it with the intent of, as Dinot said, usability. And one of the main features it has is that whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're able to find exactly the product you need or provide the product that is being requested. The next feature, matching and concluding transactions. So we've built a platform where you can actually do an entire transaction in this system. Unfortunately, because of GAN of itself, we lack some things. For example, we don't have a reliable courier service. So we can't actually track deliveries using the platform, unfortunately. However, we've built in such a way that on both sides of the transaction, the buyer and seller can confirm whether they have sent and received payment and also whether they have received their products. In some cases, uh, with some payment systems that we have incorporated, there is automatic verification. For example, if you do a credit card transaction, the system will be notified and your order will be updated automatically. We still cater for payment systems like the manual ones, cash, checks, bank transfers, whatever the case might be. You can all, you can use any method throughout the system. Now the third feature is the combining orders. So as was mentioned in our problem definition, some buyer might request a large amount of some produce. And the only way to fill this order is if a number of farmers are able to satisfy different parts of it depending on what they could produce. So our system caters for that as well. So we're gonna give you a walkthrough of exactly how you can do these things within the system. Yes, so here's our application, of course, accessible via the domain farmsmarket.gy. And Sonny is gonna go log in with the account that we made for the code sprint exercise. So one of the things that we thought about when building this is that with this application, it would be good if when you log in, your role isn't defined by picking it from a dropdown, but it's defined by whatever you choose to do. So if you choose to buy through the platform, then you're a buyer. If you wish to sell, then you're a seller. So there's no inherent distinction between the roles that you might have. So let's say that we are looking for produce. So it allows farmers to post whatever produce they have already reaped or intend to reap shortly. So when you go to buy produce, you'll see a listing of all the available items. And if we open a particular category, we'll see items within that category, as well as who are the top sellers for this product. So um, the Code Sprint team is one of our top sellers for locally produced broccoli. So now when we go to that listing, we'll get more details about the listing of itself. You'll get also the quantity, expiry dates as well. And because this is a listing by the account that we've logged in, you wouldn't see the controls to actually buy anything. But if we were to go to a different product category, and this is sold by Sunny. So since I'm a buyer and I'm looking at this product page, when I come, one of the first things that that helps me to build trust is that we have actually have a mechanism in place to verify user accounts. So you notice that Sonny, next to his name, is a little, it's in a different color with a little tick, as well as a number in bracket. So when he, he'll explain what that number means, but this shows that his account has been verified by us, meaning that he submitted information to verify identity as well as his address. So just, just to build trust, now, 
what happens when we go to a market in Guyana? Sometimes you might go and the man say, well, I sell the tomato for 200 pounds. Or you say, man, you flex on 180. And you might accept your offer. So why prevent that from happening here? So within the platform, you'll notice that there is the make an offer button. So you're actually able to make an offer to negotiate the price for whatever product you may choose to view as a way to, to, to simulate the experience that we get when we go to a market. So as, again, as Dinaud said, we built with the user in mind. Well, now let's go to the next section, an actual request for produce. So these are requests that our buyers would have come into this platform and posted. So there are a number of different items. So if you open um, rice, for instance. So this is the current order of rice. And what it shows is how many or how much of the order has been filled in. So you have a little scale to the left and just some basic information about the listing of itself, the request of itself. So what we're doing right now is we're going to emulate a typical use case scenario. Suppose um, I am a farmer out in the field, for instance. I don't have a smartphone. I have a normal phone. But I've just been informed by my farm hands that, yo, we just reaped X amount. How do we get into the platform? So what we've done is that we've implemented a mobile interface that allows you to text and actually have a product listed here. So we're going to show that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post a listing for plants in. I'm going to sell that for five, $500,500, 100 pounds. So as a browser of the system, Sunny is now going to check on the, the produce section for the listing that I have posted with plants in. Yeah, right, back to the sun. Yep. So I've just posted this. Notice 500,500 pounds. Now what Sunny is going to do as well is he's going to make an offer to my listing. And I will receive a notification on my phone saying that somebody has offered you X amount to buy this thing. So what we've done is when I get it, you, Sassy, you should also get a message on your phone saying that you've received an offer for this thing. Just to, just to demonstrate the capability of it. Um, go ahead. Yes. So... The final section, one of the final things we like to show is the interface for accepting offers. So in the bottom section, you would see offers that, that producers would have made to your requests, as well as options to accept or decline. Now, once you've selected uh, any quantity, you will then have the option to confirm this and actually process a transaction. As, as we mentioned before, you could actually do this through credit card payments because based on our stats, almost everyone in Guyana, well, most people have bank accounts. And with local bank accounts today, you actually have access to your funds using a debit card. So we've built that into the platform so that you could do an entire transaction using payment, different payment methods. So now I'll hand you over to Sonny, who will take you through the rest of our presentation. Something we thought about when we were designing the application is that what the platform interacts with is things which can perish, right? They have some spoilage, they expire at some date. So what we built into the system is a freshness rating. So what it basically is, is it's a percentage that tells you how fresh the product is. So when I'm a, sell when I'm a buyer and I come and see Okro is at 90% freshness, I would buy that. But if I come and see um, Okro at 40%, I'll then make an offer. I'll say, hey, your Okro is 40% freshness. Let me get it for a cheaper price or things like that. 
and that's the basic idea of the freshness rating and I could leave a good review on the product as well and that brings me to the next point which is feedback um, we handle feedback two ways in the application that is on the order itself you can post feedback all right um, what you can do when you leave feedback is you can say whether you have whether your rating was positive neutral or negative and then you can leave your own personal message there another thing you can do is what are the chances that your order there's something wrong with your order that's very likely so we built something called report issue and what that does is it sends us an email whenever you get an issue which basically tells us the details of how things went wrong and stuff like that all right so apart from that um, we know it's you know quite a kind of thing but that's generally our basic idea of the platform is all the things we like stats or open data policy which is shared uh, data free for anyone who ever needs it and also a stats management so um, thanks for listening everyone that's our presentation thank you all right All right, one of the things that we did ask is um, one of the fundamental requirements for this was the ability to generate national data in the sense that um, when some, some of the information that you, that you, should, that you need to provide is that we, uh, from, from, from a national standpoint, somebody would want to know well, how many, you know, how much coconut soap would it be, how much thin soap would it be, to give you an idea. Um, is that Available in, in, at any level? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's through the stats management portal, which we didn't mention that one time. But essentially, it shows um, what is the most requested product at what date. So you can see from a guy that has a higher request value in December versus a very consumption money you've made um, on different products. If I say I'm making more Corella, it means that I need to invest a bit more Corella because there's better returns in it. Also, right. something which um, we've done just for extra value is add a return on investment. Oh, you just put in your investment that you made on the profits you've done so far and stick it to the um, For national purposes, though, this is specific to the users of the application. For global, uh, for anyone to ask, there's the open, there's the open data policy which is guided with certain principles that we would tell the buyers and sellers. Um, there's only one example I hear, have here is extracting data. So this shows the amount of sales in a particular latitude and longitude based on a location. You can spit that out and then some of the map and the GIS and say, well, these are the areas where it's probably more for it now because of that. All right. Thank you. All right. Good. All right. Thanks.